Welcome back, everyone. I am Cass Pianci, and I am not joined, as usual, by my partner in crime, Bennett Tomlin, because today we're trying something a little different, an episode where I read an old article. Just trying it out. Maybe we'll do it more in the future. Tell me what you think. It's September of 2018 and my third trip to China, this time for a very particular reason. Bitfinex, one of the largest cryptocurrency exchanges in the world, is moving massive amounts of Bitcoin volume, along with hundreds of altcoins too. But how do they keep the lights on and the servers running? The two companies, Bitfinex and its sister company Tether, operate under the same parent company, iFinex. I depart a glorious sunny Los Angeles fall to arrive in a damp, sweltering, thunderstorm-laden Hong Kong to find iFinex, or any physical remnant of this company dominating the crypto landscape. Hong Kong is as exciting and steampunk as it gets. There's Ferraris, Lambos, and Teslas on every street corner, while vendors sell their goods and cheap diners offer duck or dumplings. It's Beverly Hills meets Skid Row, with all the neon and LCD screens of Vegas. Kowloon, where we're staying in a cramped apartment with minimal amenities, is the supreme essence of everything I imagined Hong Kong to be before arriving. The poorest people living in the toughest of conditions, mixing with the high finance bros from England, the US, China, and Hong Kong proper. With three known addresses in hand, we take the MTR, or the Hong Kong subway, to Central and walk to the Bank of America Tower. Somehow, we stroll right past the guards by the elevators and ride up to the 13th floor. It isn't what I expect. There's no open businesses on either side of the large hallway, and the offices of iFinex are shuttered, a large piece of plywood being used as a door. Behind the inch-thick painted door-ish thing, we can hear drills and saws, people shouting at one another. We're standing here at former Bitfinex headquarters, and I guess it's just a construction site now. When we get back to the first floor, we recheck all the signage and office listings to see if iFinex is anywhere to be seen. It isn't. So we move on to a nearby address listed for Bitfinex in the Easy Commercial Building. When we step into the lobby, we're greeted with a cold, air-conditioned breeze and no guard in sight. We check a board with names and entities, but it's all in Chinese, and we can't make heads or tails of it. Eventually, looking at the registered office address, we determine Bitfinex Technology Services LTD should be on the 19th floor, suite number two. The only thought I'd had until we entered the elevator was that there'd be no one at these addresses. Griffin asked me, what questions do you have? Questions? Yeah, like, what's the plan once we get in there? I don't know, I finally say. Griffin laughs. You haven't thought of any questions? It's a stunning and sad revelation. Better think fast, Griff says. JNC HK Business Limited is printed on the opaque window framed within the door. Hi, is this Bitfinex? What? Uh, is this Bitfinex? No, she says. Oh, have you heard of Bitfinex? Do you, do you know Bitfinex Technology Services Limited? Yes, yes, she says. We do little Bitfinex paperwork sometime. Do they ever come in? Do they bring in the paperwork? She shakes her head no. Only paperwork. We thank the ladies for their time and take off. JNC HK Business Limited, it turns out, is not Bitfinex. Our next stop is Tether, which supposedly rests on the eighth floor in a glassy blue postmodern 1980s chic behemoth of a building sitting right next to the harbor. Getting in proves to be a little more difficult. We have to explain ourselves to a guard. We say we're looking for Tether, give a precise floor and office address, and he smiles and waves us through. The same nervous energy as before fills me, but even more. This building is beautiful and classy compared to the last. If iFinex and Tether do have offices in Hong Kong, in this building, it might be proof that there's legitimate cash in their reserves. 
What if they're willing to sit down for a talk? What if they have billions of dollars? What if I see Jan Ludovicus Vanderveld? What if they follow us after we leave? The fears and questions are extinguished. We push a buzzer and stand idly with our GoPros for a minute. This office values security. A Chinese woman, again in her 40s, again surprised to see two Westerners, opens the door enough to speak with us. We're looking for Tether. This is the uh, listed address. Is this Tether? She shakes her head. No, no. I see. And do you work with Tether? Are they a client? With every question, she seems more suspicious. No, she says. I've never heard of Tether. Sorry. H have a nice day. Griff and I sit in a coffee shop in the lobby of the Not Tether HQ. I am defeated. How's your coffee? Griff asks. Fine. It isn't very good. Neither is the brownie I'm eating. The tail end of Typhoon Mengkut is whipping Hong Kong, and it starts pouring. I'm not sure what to make of this or what to do with the knowledge that there is no Ifinex, Bitfinex, or Tether at least in a physical sense. To many, these details come across as banal or trivial, but that continues to be my motivation for asking for answers from Finex. This group of companies has over 10 billion in assets as of writing this piece, yet no one can provide a location where you can find executives or even a receptionist. There's no one to answer if the money were to go missing. There's nowhere to go voice a complaint and there's no one and nothing to hold responsible. But most disconcerting of all is that the cryptocurrency community, the community that prides itself on advocating for trustlessness and verification of facts, refuses at every turn to demand that same level of transparency from a company that's repeatedly promised it and lied. Again, everyone, that was just a test. If you didn't like it, let me know. Reach out on Twitter and or our Discord and tell me. Um, if you did enjoy it, uh, let me know. Or if you have any critiques that you think would be good for making content like this in the future, I just want to give you guys something a little bit different, offer something a little bit different than our normal stuff, maybe something we could do on a more regular basis. If you enjoyed it, let me know. If you hated it, let me know. Again, thank you for listening.